Hello and welcome back to Computer Retrobus. Continuing on with our Pentium 4 project. Can this Pentium 4 run well in the Windows XP era? And I suspect it can because a lot of this was 2004 era. So what we'll do is we'll format these hard drives, get a nice clean install of Windows XP, get the drivers on and get to some benchmarking. Let's go. Okay, first things first, let's get into the BIOS. Make sure that everything is detected. We can see our drives are both detected here. And we can see our hard drive, the Western Digital 1600 is in there also. Next thing we need to do, boot. Okay, let's select our Sony. Uh, yeah, looks like the Sony as the primary. Rebooting. Please, let's be booting. It's really thinking hard about it. Perhaps not. Maybe I'll check that with this drive or try another disk. Okay, it tried really hard, but uh, it ended up booting off the old OS on the hard drive. I suspect, yes, that's exactly what it's done. Um, let's try again. Okay, so loading the operating system, I tried both drives and I realized this one does not actually work. So uh, what we'll do is we'll restart, put it in the drive that does work, and boot from that. Yes, we want to boot from the CD, please. Okay, so my computer capture hardware did not want to play with these resolutions, so we're going to have to go old school here for a little bit. Okay, here we go. We always agree. Okay, we want to continue. What I like to do is I like to actually split the partition into two and putting all the drivers installation media on the second drive so if i ever need to format c and reinstall again all the drivers are ready to go on that second petition so i'll delete this one create a new petition i'll go um, 50 create a second one that's larger Okay, well that took, uh, <laughs> that took, I've forgotten how long it takes to uh, install Windows XP on these older machines, that took quite a while, but we're back on it. Okay, so <laughs> I've had quite the saga, I just could not get that copy to work properly. I ended up having to get a CD copy because it was a, a copy that was burnt onto a DVD and clearly this drive it still is not the best. So once I've got an actual CD into it, it was fine and installed correctly, we're actually seeing what we should be seeing with a proper, uh, fresh Windows XP install. So we'll go through the process. So we're going through our typical first steps of an installation of Windows XP, setting up a new user and all that other good stuff. And here we are with the classic welcome screen. What I want to do now is update and jazz up our Windows XP installation a little bit. So I'll install a updated version of the famous Bliss background, but also update the theme to one of the later ones that Microsoft released, which was called Zune. Now it's time to install our chipset drivers. Drivers for the Sound Blaster ordered you to. And lastly, the drivers for the GeForce FX 5600. I installed version 45.23 because Google informed me that this was the best driver for this video card. So getting up CPU-Z, we can look at some of our system specs. So what we have here is a Pentium 4 Northwood core with hyperthreading. Uh, this processor has an 800 MHz front side bus, which is great. It's much faster than the 533 FSB, which was on a lot of the previous Pentium 4s. Um, for motherboard, we have an Asus, or Asus, however you want to pronounce it, uh, P4P800 using Intel's i865 chipset. 
we've got 2 gigabytes of RAM and a GeForce FX 5600 video card. Okay, now I think it's time to get into some benchmarks. Let's start with Quake 3 time demo. The system absolutely gunned it through the Quake 3 time demo, which is what you'd expect because Quake 3 Arena came out in 1999 and this system is around 2004. Okay, now moving on to 3D Mark 2001 Second Edition. Uh, this was pretty cool. It ran all the tests and it was initially looking pretty good looking at those frames. Um, and actually, I saw some of these tests that I'd never seen before because uh, I never had a card that had all the pixel shaders. But that was all really cool to see. Um, however, the final result of 8101 is actually pretty low. Um, for this card, you want to, you're expecting about eight and a half to nine thousand, really. So I'm not sure if this card has a limited bus or not, but that is pretty low. Okay, so now let's run a benchmark a little bit more closer to the time period from this machine, which is around 0304. So watching 3D Mark 03. The first test wasn't too bad, but after that it really started struggling. You can see a lot of these tests really coming down to the single digits in the frames. So we can see that this card probably wasn't the best um, during the time that it came out. It really does struggle to show us some respectable performance. Now moving on to our last benchmark, which is Cinebench R10. Um, looking at the CPU scores mainly, and they are pretty much uh, bang on. Um, slightly above average, I'd say. So 1700 for the single CPU and 2011 for the multi, because it does have um, hyper-threading. Okay, and we are all done for this episode. So we've got a fresh copy of Windows XP on there. All our drivers loaded. Ran some benchmarks and some games, and yeah, it was really great fun to uh, get this rescued PD4 back up and running, just like in its glory day. If you like this episode, please uh, like and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.